I once heard it said, you're in a battle. If you don't know it, then you're probably losing. Now, this is very true for the Christian life. I think about myself personally. There's been times in my life that have seemed really smooth. They were just really like, man, I'm just kind of going with the flow, not really thinking about too many things, kind of doing what I, I want to do in large large part, especially early on in my faith. There are seasons of this. Looking back, those were times that I was compromising a lot, that I was giving into temptation, that I was just not really thinking too much about what I was watching, what I was taking in what I was being tempted by, what I was giving into, the sins that I was committing that I wasn't even aware I was committing them. And it's not about being necessarily paranoid, but it's about saying, hey, look, I want to honor God. I want to be close to God. I want to have a close, intimate relationship with him. That's what this whole thing's a part of, you know, the point of it is. This is what it's about. That's what Christianity is. And so if I'm not really focusing on honoring him, if I'm not focusing on being close to him and doing as he does, being a disciple of him, what's the point? I think about Satan. Satan comes into these moments where we're not really even aware of what we're doing, not really thinking too much about it, and he tempts us. He comes into these places. Maybe there's some weakness there. Maybe there's some, you know, already some desires of our heart that we want to go in this direction. And he says, hey, you know, you want to you want to keep going? You want to go here? This seems like a good path today. I want to get into the mind of Satan. Now, not really, not actually, because that's a far more dangerous place than I'm equipped to going. But the truth is we need to understand Satan's character, how he tempts people th- that we can know when we're being tempted and how he goes about his sly plans. The Bible says that Satan is a liar and he's the father of all lies. Now, there's some major lies about Satan that I want to dispel, but I also want to give you a practical example of what it looks like when Satan tempts someone. There isn't much of a better example than when Satan tempts Jesus in the wilderness. Some of you might be familiar with it, but I encourage you to keep watching because there might be some things that you have never seen before. So let's jump right into there. It's in Luke 4. I encourage you to follow along with me in your Bible if you have it. Before we start looking at how Satan tempts people, I want to understand something first. Dr. Larry Crabb talked about how humans have two basic needs. Now, you can call them different things, but they kind of all whittle down to these two things. Obviously, our primary need is God, and in him, all these needs can be fulfilled. But this is how we understand it in human terms, okay? So there's significance and security. Significance and security. These cover a lot, most things, right? Significance and security. I want you to be thinking about how Satan will use those needs against us, okay? And how he tries to use them against Jesus here. So anyway, let's move on. And Jesus, full of the Holy Spirit, returned from the Jordan and was led by the Spirit into the wilderness for 40 days, being tempted by the devil. And he ate nothing during those days. And when they were ended, he was hungry. Remember, Jesus experienced all that we experience, right? And he was God, but he was also man, 100% God, 100% man, fully God, fully man. Okay, so he was hungry. And the, the devil said to him, if you are the son of God, command this stone to become bread. And Jesus answered him, it is written, man shall not live by bread alone. Okay, so what is Satan trying to do here? He knows Jesus is hungry, so what does he do? Obviously, he tempts him with bread. But it goes beyond that. I know a lot of different preachers and teachers have gone a lot of different directions to this, and it's very meaty, so you can go multiple directions. But here's what I'm going to do with it. Um, Satan here is trying to tempt Jesus with meeting his temporal needs. Okay, he's experiencing hunger. He He's saying, okay, Jesus, you have the power to do something. Uh, you can meet this need right away. He's hungry, so why not make some food? Well, it's not a sin to eat bread. No, it's not. But it is a sin to listen to Satan and obey what he has to say. So Jesus isn't going to do that. He's not going to succumb to what Satan wants him to do. But how does this apply to us? Okay, I'm thinking about that. How does this apply to us? Um, Satan all the time comes to us and he says, hey, Isaac, I can satisfy your temporal need. Okay, and even these perceived needs that you have, maybe it's just wants. I can help you fulfill those things. You have these longings in your heart. You have these desires. You feel like God, God's not really meeting them. So I can. How has this played out a lot in our culture? Here's a guess. Pornography. Okay, think about it. Um, Sex is something that's designed by God. That's good. That's holy. That's right in the context of marriage. One man, one woman. Covenant for life. This is imaging Christ and the church. It's beautiful. It's amazing. What do we have? Well, we have uh, sex drive. Okay, that's true. But God says, wait for the day 
you know, don't open desire before it's time. Don't, don't open these doors before it's time till you're with your wife, till you're with your husband. Cause yeah, you're going to experience these, you know, okay, I'm attracted to this person, this person. But the Bible also says, Jesus says, you shall not look at a woman to lust after her for you've committed adultery with her in your heart. So there's borders to this. You have this desire in your heart, but God says, wait, okay, you know, there'll be a time for that, but it needs to be in the right context. What does Satan do? He comes and he says, hey, Isaac, I have this proposal for you, okay? Um, you have this desire, you want this, and I can make it happen for you. You can watch it, and you can be fulfilled, you can be satisfied, you can, you really need this. You're tired, aren't you? And you think about that, how often has Satan come to you offering you something like that? He says, you know, hey, I, I know this isn't the best, but it's going to satisfy your needs for right now. It's, it's what you need. You deserve this. I'm not going to listen to Satan, but so often we do. Because why? We want to feel good. We want to feel okay. Here's what a lot of people misunderstand about Satan. They think that he is coming at them with only like attacks and bad things. And, you know, oh, I'm going to smite your family. I'm going to do like all this kind of thing. Maybe you're looking at Job and you're like, wow, that's what Satan wants to do to me. He wants to wipe out my whole family and wipe like, yeah, Satan wants to do that. But here's the thing. Satan comes to you with things that you kind of already want in your heart. That's what the Bible says, right? You're tempted out of your own desires. Satan just amplifies those things. He's like, hey, you know, there's something, something in there. Yeah, you should follow that. You should pursue that. I'm going to help you. I'm going to make you feel good. I'm going to make you feel safe. I'm going to make you feel loved. <laughs> it doesn't work. It doesn't work. We need to know that. I think of the woman at the well who was going to fulfill her temporal needs. This wasn't a sin. This wasn't a bad thing. She's filling up water, bringing her back to her family, whatever. Um, but Jesus was like, hey, I know you, number one. I know you. And I know you've been with a bunch of men. The man that you're with right now is not your husband. Okay. I need you to know that. And you're looking to fulfill yourself. You're looking to be satisfied somehow. You're trying to figure out your life. You're trying to gain control. You're acting out of sin, out of your own desires. I have living water for you. And it's found in me. And with this, all your needs will be met. You will be satisfied fully. You will be satisfied fully. That's a hard thing for us to understand, to grasp. But Jesus is the truth. And he is the, he's the actual fulfillment of what Satan tries to offer us. Satan gives us some sort of substitute. And he's like, Hey, I got, I got it in the back here. You know, it's like giving you the knockoff stuff, but the knockoff stuff is actually poison that will kill you. That analogy went off track, but you know what I mean? One quick aside before we jump back into the rest of the video, if you are struggling with pornography and by struggling, I mean, you watch it sometimes, occasionally, once in a while, or maybe a lot. If it has some sort of hold in your life and you want to break free and you should want to break free, guys, this is, this is not good for you. Here's what you can do. And it's a no brainer, really, is get some sort of accountability software on your computer. And today I have to offer you, I'm not sponsored by them, but 30 days free on Covenant Eyes. It is an affiliate link, so it does help if you guys sign up for the full plan. It supports the ministry. But ultimately, guys, I think it's really going to help you. So sign up, click the link in my description. And the devil took him up and showed him all the kingdoms of the world in a moment and said to him, to you, I will give all this authority and their glory for it has been delivered to me and I give it to whom I will. For if you then worship me, it will all be yours. And Jesus said to him, it is written, you shall worship the Lord your God and him only shall you serve. On first glance, it's pretty obvious what Satan is tempting Jesus with. It's authority, it's a power, it's power. But you think about it, Um, wait a minute, wait for a second. Jesus has power. Jesus has all the power. Uh, Satan is, Satan is not like the, you know, he's not the overlord. No, God is sovereign. Uh, Jesus is powerful. Jesus has all authority. All authority on heaven and earth has been given to me, Jesus said. So what's going on here? This is a counterfeit authority that Satan is offering. It's a counterfeit authority. This is huge for us to know, okay? When Satan tempts you with authority, power, prestige, popularity, fame, significance, what's going on there? It's not real power, authority, significance, popularity. It's counterfeit. It's not the real thing. Jesus has the real thing. But when you give in to that, what are you forced to do? You get the counterfeit authority. Okay, 
You know, you, you get the popularity, you get the prestige, but what are you forced to do? Bow down to me. Bow down to Satan. The core need that he's trying to pull out here is our need for significance, to be known, to be seen, to, to be seen as good, to be seen as enough, to be seen as significant in some way. And then he pulls out that sinful desire that we know about too well, that we've seen in the garden. Don't you want to be like God? Don't you want to be like God? Oh, just eat from this fruit and you'll be like God. You'll see the way that he sees. You'll be the way that he is. You'll have all the power that he has. You'll finally know all the things that you've wanted to know. That's tempting. That is tempting. That is how Satan comes in. He pulls at those things. Let's keep going. Verse 9. And he took him to Jerusalem and set him on the pinnacle of the temple and said to him, If you are the son of God, throw yourself down from here, for it is written, He shall command his angels concerning you to guard you, and on their hands they will bear you up, lest you strike your foot against a stone. And Jesus answered him, it is said, you shall not put the Lord your God to the test. Satan is questioning Jesus' identity. He is questioning Jesus' identity. Why does he do this? Why, why is this a, this a powerful thing? Okay, he's saying, you know, throw yourself off. And if you are who you say you are, then you'll be fine. You'll be all right. You'll be okay. Like I said, a lot of different pre preachers and teachers will go different directions with this because there's a lot of meat to it. But here's what I'll have to say. Okay. Think about your own life, okay? Take this as a practical example. Satan's, one of Satan's primary tactics, maybe one that I've seen him use the most in my life and the life of others is he's going to question your identity. He's going to question your identity. You sin, you fall. Maybe you, you do something that you know, okay, man, I've screwed up. What does Satan do? You're not a child of God. You're not different. You're not changed. You think you were... You were saved, you were new, you were brand new, you were this child of God, you were made in his image, you created new, a new creation? Who do you think you're kidding? Who do you think you are? That's how shame will crush a person. It'll destroy them because they're questioning, who am I? Wait a minute, um, I've fallen into sin, I've done this thing, all is lost. I, I can't make my way back to God. Meanwhile, God is saying, Approach the throne room with confidence. Um, I've saved you. I've called you by name. You are mine. Nothing can separate you from the love of God. Neither height nor depth, nor spiritual forces, nor principalities or powers. Satan is arguing against that. He's saying, no, this has separated you from God. You can never, you can never be in right relationship with God again. You are a fraud. You are a fraud. Honestly, guys, <laughs> honestly, guys, what I do, I say, yeah, <laughs> I am a fraud. I am. I'm a fraud. I'm not all that I'm cracked up to be. It's true. I'm not what I should be. It's true. I've fallen short big time. That's how amazing Jesus is. That even when I've fallen, even when I've screwed up so many times, he welcomes me back as his son with celebration, with joy. He sings over me. He loves me by his grace. It's not because Isaac is so awesome. He's so amazing. He always does everything perfectly. It's no, Jesus is perfect. Jesus is amazing. Jesus says, come into relationship with me because I have all that you need. I have forgiveness, I have mercy, I have grace, and I've bought all that by my blood. Back into it, verse 13. And when the devil had ended every temptation, he departed from him until an opportune time. A lot of people skip over that, but this is the truth here. Satan will leave you. Yeah, okay, he's gonna, the tempting's done, whatever. Made it out. Yes, back in the sweet spot. I did it, I fought off temptation. Great, I didn't do that thing, or I didn't watch that thing, or I didn't say that thing. Great, wonderful. Satan's waiting for an opportune time. Does this mean that we're going to lurk in fear? Oh, no, Satan's going to come back. I'm going to be tempted again. Oh, no. No, 
It's to stand boldly and know that God is with us, that his power and his presence is within us. Here's something to encourage you. Submit yourself to God, therefore resist the devil and he will flee from you. Notice the key word here that I pick up on is submit. Submit yourself to God. How do we do that? Humble yourself. Humble yourself. We don't battle temptation by saying, I'm strong enough. I can do it. Yeah, I'm so amazing. I'm a super Christian. I don't get tempted. And when I do, I shoot the devil and I eliminate him. No. It's like, hey, God, I'm weak. I don't have enough strength on my own. Can you be with me in this? I'm going to rely on you fully. God, give me strength. God, equip me. God, help me submit to you. God, I give this desire to you. God, I'm, I'm right now being tempted and I'm struggling right now. I want to give into this because I feel weak. God, would you give me the power and the strength to say no to this, to rely on you, to choose you above this sin, above this fleshly desire? Because I love you, God, because you've given yourself for me. And out of that, I want to please you. I want to love you. As you've loved me while I was still a sinner. And you know what, guys? He does. He actually delivers you. He's actually there. He's actually going to give you enough strength that you need to run from this temptation. To say no. To rely on him. Because, look, he's got all the power and authority. (sighs) Rely on him and he will give you strength. Thank you for watching this video. It is my pleasure to bring God's word to you on a weekly basis here on Daily Disciple on all the different social media platforms that I have on TikTok and Instagram, Facebook. I appreciate you guys liking and subscribing on here and supporting me on Patreon because this is the way that I can be supported in what I'm doing financially and I can can, can keep sharing God's word and keep uh, helping people and equipping people to follow Jesus daily. That's my pleasure. That's my mission. That's my heart. So if you would, please subscribe down below.